Okay, so next on the agenda, I have the great pleasure of uh, introducing somebody that I think we've been working together longer than either of us would like to admit. Uh, so we've been through the battles, we've been through the transitions of Unix to Windows, of risk to open standards. We have thrived through that. It's been, uh, as you can imagine, a transformative experience. We've had to transform the business model, the product development model, our supply chain model, our marketing model. Right? Terry's been a core member of that team with myself, and uh, as I said, he is the king of cool. So why don't you come on up and uh, give us the product demonstration. visitor in my hands here. Um, you've all had a chance to see what's up on stage. Um, I'm going to give you a peek on what's, in the, on what's inside and uh, kind of show you a little bit about the Z workstation. The thing that's fun to show off, and I'm showing off right now, is I just walked up the aisle here with a workstation in one hand. And so you see these wonderful handles. Um, when we worked on creating this design, uh, the design really was something that we said, we're going to design this new from the inside out, but we're going to start from the outside in. And the outside meant talking to our customers, really spending a lot of time understanding what their needs were and what they wanted. One of the things they said they wanted was handles. Another dimension of that, they said, you know, we're always moving these things around. PCs have got rubber feet on the bottom. This one has no rubber feet. In fact, you can slide it back and forth with ease on carpet and on tile floors just as easily. So we started off first with how do we make this really functional from the outside. So let me put it up here and give you a real kind of detailed view of exactly what the product looks like. With BMW Design Works, we really worked on creating something that had a real message to it, a message of performance, of style, as well as best in class. And so what you see is something that's got very elegantly designed, but very simply designed, brushed aluminum side panels. So panels on both sides. As well as, we've got very clean lines on the front of the workstation. This design here basically has a slot load feed, so it's very clean on the front. If you've got multiple optical bays, you can actually replace this and have multiple optical bays in front here so you have more access points. But again, very clean overall. It still is the same size as our previous workstations. So as Jim said, we can still put this into a rack. And we've got a lot of customers who embed these systems into their complex design, medical systems or whatever. And having that size was critical. Now that was a real challenge because with new technology and more and more capacity. How do you cool it? How do you manage that? And others have basically grown the chassis and moved things higher. Um, we said we've got to keep the chassis the same size, and so we really worked hard on that. But as we, we've talked about, I'm going to turn to the side a little bit more so everyone can see this, is it's what's on inside that really ultimately makes a difference. And so when we open up the, the side panel here, what you see is a design on the inside that is a continuation of what we saw on the outside. So what you see is something that is not just a bunch of wires and computer components and hard drives hanging out, maybe a power supply stuck back here, but actually something that actually is fairly attractive. Now attractiveness is nice, but functionality is what's really important. So as an engineer and the engineering team back in Fort Collins says, well, pretty is nice, but how well does it work? Everything inside of here has an engineering reason and a purpose behind it. The first thing I want to point out is the fact that you see green touch points all over. So there's a number of them all over. I'm going to kind of walk through those with you and tell you a little bit about that. But those green touch points represent places for which you can service the workstation. Um, and the first one I'm going to point out is right up on top here. This green handle right here. I'm going to pull out the power supply. <clears throat> and most people are quite amazed that I can pull the power Sorry. supply out without disconnecting at least 500 different cables. Um, 
this is, we think, one of the first power supplies ever designed to be customer serviceable and does not require any disconnection of cables and so forth. So that's kind of you know, point number one. How do we do that? We use a technology called blind main connectors. So we've got these connectors back here which plug into connectors in the back of the workstation. And so it easily plugs in and, uh, and is, is able to able take out. The second thing that's important, and I'm actually going to position it this way because it's, it's the same direction as the workstation. If you look, is that the power supply actually goes the entire length of the chassis. What we have up front here are the inlet fans that cool the power supply. And if you look where those inlet fans are positioned, as Jim showed in his diagram, those fans are at the front of the chassis. So again, one of the first power supplies in the workstation class products for which inlet air to the power supply is actually fresh air that comes from the front of the workstation. Now, why is that an advantage? I think it's, it's fairly obvious. If you've got cooler air, you'll get potentially better reliability because you're more efficiently cooling the power supply. In addition, if you've got cooler air, you can better manage the acoustics. Jim talked a lot about the fact that the office environment is an environment for which you get all this power, and this happens to be an 1100 watt power supply right here. So it's a, it's a very high power um, device. Trying to cool all that power is becoming a real challenge. And doing it in a way that it doesn't sound like a jet engine is in your office. If any of you have been in you know, large server rooms, you hear the fans that are blowing in there, it's like you, know, you can't even think. Well, in the office environment, you have to be able to think. So having a way to manage the cooling and, and manage the airflow was really critical. And finally, a uh, wonderful, wonderful piece of HP innovation. There's a green light on the back of the supply. When no load is applied to the supply, if I simply plug this into an AC outlet, if this light comes on, it does an automatic self-test, and it tells me if the supply is good or bad. So in the event you would have a workstation that, for whatever reason, failed, and it wasn't turning on, the first thing we can do over the phone with a customer is say, just pull the power supply out and plug it in, and tell us if the green light is on. If the green light doesn't come on, we can immediately ship out to that customer a new supply, have them back up and running in basically 24 hours. From the time they call, basically uh, get it mailed out to them, and they can replace it. Uh, this is something that we've innovated inside of HP. In fact, uh, one thing I'll mention, this particular design here has over 20 unique HP innovations. Uh, innovations that uh, you know, we will um, uh, patent and, and basically protect HP's uh, intellectual property. So that's kind of the beginning of the workstation in terms of some really neat innovation on the supply. The next area, the big challenge was this area under this piece of column right here, and I'll, I'll talk about this in a minute. But one of the key elements that's in front of the other processor. Well, if you simply let normal airflow happen without any ducting, without any, any thought or engineering behind it, warm air from this processor would blow on this processor, and this processor would be hot, this one would be cool, and you've got an imbalance. That would cause reliability issues, it causes a number of other problems, because this fan would probably have to run faster, which once again comes into the, in, in, an issue of, with regard to acoustics. And so we had to look at how do we design that. So one thing you'll see is there's actually a duct right here. And when you have a chance later on to come up and look, or look closer, you can actually see the duct work. But in addition to the duct work, is this wonderfully pretty design here. It's very functional. And I'll show you from the side. There are actual designs in this column that allow us to manage the airflow. And if I put this column back on, and you can see how easy that was. The cowling, the fresh air from here actually flows over the top of the first processor and down to the second processor. In addition, there's a small amount of air that is actually between the outside cover in here that actually goes through the scoop and actually provides additional fresh air to the processor. So once again, something that was very stylish and very appropriate based upon the industrial design language of the exterior became very, very functional and very, very important in helping us manage this design and really controlling the acoustics. So continuing from there, underneath these fans right here are 12 memory dims, basically where we can put all of the, uh, the power in the workstation in terms of, of memory. Well, you've got to be able to service those. And so here are two fans, and you just saw me pull this out. Once again, I did not disconnect any cables. Right here is another one of those wonderful little blind-made connectors that plugs into the motherboard right down here. 
And so when a customer needs to service, for example, add some more memory because, gee, 8 gig wasn't enough, I need 16 gig and plug in some more uh, DIMMs down here, it's very easy to remove this part, go in and plug, uh, uh, plug the memory in, and once again be able to service, uh, service the design. In addition, these fans are actually independently controlled. So it's not just, you know, basically two plugs here that basically control both fans. We have the ability to actually manage the fan speed of each one of the fans inside the box to optimally cool that area based upon the loads that we're seeing, as well as manage the acoustics optimally. Those fan tables are actually contained inside of the HP BIOS, and it's something that we validate and test during final, uh, final verification of the workstation. Um, now as we begin to look inside here, another important new distinction you will notice is that we don't have very many cables. Uh, we talked about all the cables that exist up here. Um, you see one cable that basically is a power connector here to the back side by where the memory is, but that's about all the cables that you see. You say, well, where do you put all the cables, Terry? Actually, the cables are hidden on the back side here, so they're underneath the motherboard tray. Um, and so we basically moved them out of the way and made it very convenient for people to service. Now, service was one element of this, but the second was reliability. When you have more cables inside the box, you create obstructions for airflow. When you have obstructions for airflow, you can have heating and cooling issues. If you have heating and cooling issues, you have to increase the fans. If you increase the fans, all of a sudden your acoustics get worse. And so step by step, we began to look at all of those dimensions of the engineering process to really understand how we could optimize this design. So again, very clean design. From, the, from a user point of view, I love it because it's easy to service. From an engineering point of view, it's very practical. Another critical area in terms of a problem that we had to solve was the I.O. cage. The I.O. cage here, in fact, all the I.O. cards are, uh, all, all are retained by a very simple device here. But this device, once again, had some very specific engineering functions that went into it. The first is many PCs, require you to unscrew the cards from the back bulkhead. Well, this has no screws. There's simply a, a, a very well-designed latch that allows me to open up the back bulkhead. That basically holds all the I.O. cards in place on the back side. But as most of you know, in, in this particular design here, we have two NVIDIA Quadro FX4800 graphics cards. So these cards are very heavy. They're very mechanically um, challenging in terms of being able to control in fact, they need to stay in place during shipping as well as uh, normal moving around the office. And so oftentimes, you will see in a workstation, there's a large retaining device that goes in the middle here. Um, you know, some, some manufacturers put a retaining device that kind of clamps across it. Others have little arms that would kind of hold things in place. Those are a bit problematic, and they can be marginally effective in some cases, very effective in others. Um, well, we decided we had to come up with a more rigid solution to that. And so, in addition to this back area, which holds down the back cars over here, we created a number of springs. There's little plastic springs mounted on top of this piece of column right here, which hold the center part of the I.O. card in place. So, again, very good mechanical rigidity. And then finally, cards that go all the way the length of the I.O. cage area, and, this, and these cards here actually have an extender that go here, there is, again, another plastic retainer right back here, which holds those cards in place. And so the net is, is that when I simply put this, put this device in and snap it in place, one device solved three mechanical problems, retaining things back here, here, and here. By the way, you'll notice I put this in without putting the back latch down. Okay, well, I say, well, what happened there? Again, the engineering team was very creative. There's actually a little cam area right here that basically is there's a cam, little lever right here, that basically when you put this cowling back in place, it automatically closes the door. So even the user cannot inadvertently leave this back bulkhead open. It actually closes it for him and makes sure that everything is secure. So again, the insurance team, I think, was, was really diligent in understanding all dimensions of the problem. Is that true for now? Um, so looking at the I.O. area here, we've got two NVIDIA FX4800 graphics cards in here. One of the challenges there is, is that these cards take so much power, you can't power them completely from the power circuitry on the motherboard. And so typically you have these things called the dongles. And these dongles are usually in a power supply bundle up here, and you have to basically snip a, a, a little plastic tie and pull the dongles down and so forth. Well, again, with 
a very smart cabling that we did in here. We actually included the dongles, and there's actually a little parking garage right here. If you're not using them, the cables are placed in a very convenient spot. And once again, designed to be with airflow, so that the cables do not obstruct the airflow that goes through the design. But if I need to, I can use these, and I can simply plug them directly into the graphics card right here. So once again, a lot of attention to detail was placed. Now, as you look here, you say, gee, Terry, there's two more green touch points right here. What are these touch points right here for? I'm not going to demonstrate this to you right now. Um, but basically, if I remove all the I.O. cards and I unplug the, um, the hard drive cables down here and the power cables on the motherboard, I can press these two buttons, and there's a fan assembly which pulls air across the hard drives in the front here. And I can pull out that fan assembly. That fan assembly is actually a mechanism that holds the motherboard in place. I can remove the entire motherboard with just these tools, my fingers. So in terms of servicing this, I can take the entire motherboard out and service it if I need to um, and replace it very easily. Again, using the uh, tools we were all given, our fingers. The last area that I'll show about here, uh, talk about here with regards to the design is the hard drive bay. And once again, this philosophy of no cables. So I just pulled the hard drive out. And what you'll see is it comes in a carrier. Um, the hard drive, the connectors are on the back. And I simply move to the front and place the hard drive in place. And then using a simple lever, it cams the drive in place. In other words, it forces the drive back into the cables and makes it, makes it a firm connection. If you don't have all the drive bays full, we ship empty carriers for you. Now, a neat thing about these carriers, when you look at them, is there's no screws required. I don't have to screw the hard drive in. There are small little pins that match the screw holes on the hard drive. And the pins are mounted in isolation grommets. So these are actually little rubber grommets right in here. And what those isolation grommets are is to prevent vibration from the hard drives from transmitting into the chassis itself. 15,000 RPM SAS drive can generate some nice frequency of noise that you want to isolate, and this allows us to isolate it. The last thing I'll show you with regard to the hard drives is kind of a little bit of a surprise right here, and uh, this is a solid state drive. So with this class of workstations, we will support solid state technology. This is a 64 gigabyte uh, Intel solid state drive. Uh, we've been qualifying these. Uh, these will actually not be available um, when we actually launch on Monday, um, but they will be available in May. Uh, and we'll have those uh, uh, qualified on our workstation as well. So that gives you an, an overview. Uh, there's actually one more green touch point that I haven't mentioned. It's right here. Um, this green touch point, if I pull this lever up here, allows me to remove all the opticals in the front. Um, but that kind of gives you an overview of the design. So we're excited about this because not only did we, we believe to create an incredibly elegant and powerful design on the outside, but it carries forth HP's engineering DNA on the inside. So Bill Hewitt and Dave Packard were engineers, and they viewed as a, a, viewed, a key element of what we do is how well we build the product on the inside, both in terms of its functionality and capability, and, and probably most importantly, reliability. And so we think we've really created a unique design. So with that, I will gladly entertain questions later on, and we can talk about this in more detail. But that's the new Z800 workstation. Thank you.